Calculus, calculus, calculus. It never ends. Today, we continue our journey and we'll be watching this video after Thursday's class. And we're going to learn some new derivatives. We're coming near the end of our derivatives, our, our unit, our half year unit on derivatives. So, a few loose ends to tie up, so we'll be with it another week or so. Alright, the two new derivatives that we need to learn today are the ln of x. What is the derivative of that? And e to the x. What is the derivative of that? So let's, um, first of all, I'm going to start a sketch here and pretend you can't see that didn't erase very well but I didn't want to just give it away so let's see if I can develop it and before we do that let's talk about what a logarithm is just bring that back to mind so if you recall before I do those let me go down here come back I'll come back to that um, when we have y equals ln of x, what does it mean? Well, one thing, it means ln is called the natural log, and it always has the same base. It's unwritten here. Usually there's a little subscript here, but ln tells everyone what the base is. Do you remember? It means ln of x means ln to the base e. So that is the natural log. If this said log, it would be the common logarithm, which is the base 10. But this is base e, and this is the one we'll, we'll work with a lot more this year. And e, you'll recall, is the irrational number, sort of like pi. It never ends or repeats. It's approximately 2.7, but it's true. Uh, form will have a long decimal, never ending, never repeating. So, going on, why do we have E? It pops up everywhere. It's almost like magic. It's in nature. It's in finance. It's like here, there, and everywhere. Alright, so what exponent, this is what a logarithm means, and this is what you have to ask yourself when you see ln of x. When you see this, this question comes to mind. This is looking for an exponent. What exponent do I give e, so that's the unwritten base, to get x? And that, when you answer that question, you have the logarithm. So, here's some that we can do. What is the log, natural log, of e? I wrote in the base, but it won't normally be there. So that's saying, what exponent do I give this to get this? And the answer is 1. e to the 1 equals e. All right, what about, and again, this is just for training. It's not normally going to be there, but the ln tells you that it actually is. ln, what exponent do I give e to get 1 over e? Hopefully you can fill it in before I did. Negative 1 always inverts the number like that. And over here, what exponent do I give e to get e squared? One more important one. Can you figure it out and or remember it? What's the ln of 1? The exponent I give e to get 1. The exponent I give anything to get 1 is 0. Anything to the 0 is 1. Alright, before I go on, I want to go back and recall the log, the log rules because sometimes they will help us with finding our derivatives. Remember log, and this goes for ln as well, so I'll put in ln as well of some value raised to the x, that x can run down in front. And we proved all these last year. So this equals x ln of a. The exponent can run down in front and be a coefficient. The log of two quantities 
multiplied is the same as, and I'll write it as an ln. It can be either ln of a plus ln of b and ln of a over b is ln of a minus ln of b. So sometimes we'll have our expressions like this and we can write them like this. They'll be easier to work with finding their derivatives. So keep the law of those laws in mind. Alright, next I was trying to develop the curve up here. So let's use some of the values that we found and I'll zoom out to see if we can get this graph now. I notice that when our x value is 1, the y value is 0. So x1, so that's a point on the logarithmic graph, the natural log. And I see 1 over e is a number, e is about say 3, so if this is close to 1 third, then that's our x value, that's our y value. So, say right there. And if uh, this one is e squared, so e squared would be like 9. So coming way over here, and we would go up to, so somewhere here. And here we can help, we know this is about almost 3, and it graphed about here. So putting all these dots together, we get this curve, which you should remember from your math past. Alright, and this is asymptotic, it never touches this. Alright, so, let me go back up here, you can see it a little better. Does that look familiar? Alright, that's the y equals ln of x curve. And I want to put in some values and turns out, say when x is one half, the slope here is pretty high. In fact, when x is one half, the slope here is two. And say the x is one fourth, it's even steeper. When x is one fourth, the slope is 4. So let's see if you can pick out the derivative. Right here, where x is 1, there the slope is 1. And over here, 1, when, where, what was this? Say we're right here. 1, 2, 3, 4. We'll go over here. It turns out at x is 4, the slope is very flat. So it's a small slope. In fact, when x is 4, the slope is 1 fourth. Alright, do you see the pattern? It's pretty, it's pretty cool in that every value on the ln of x curve, its x value is related to its slope in that it is, the relationship is reciprocal. So, let me put that. The slope of each x is the reciprocal, 1 over x. And therefore, and later when we find, when we learn about integrals, we'll be able to come back and do a more rigorous understanding of why the derivative is what it is. But for now, I'll just sort of lead you to it. If y equals ln of x, then y prime is 1 over x. A more useful form of that is changing x to a u. And that holds a lot more meaning because u is not just an x, it's an expression made up of x's. So it could be anything. It could be ln of x squared minus 2x plus 4, or it could be sine of x, any expression with x 